The country's military industrial complex should function, so I've taken on a quest to create the armor of the Dawn Guard, and now I'm going to make the shoulders. While the armed forces of Ukraine are showing new spells of combat magic to the orcs, I will be a bit more moderate and catch up a sheet of 30 HDSA steel. God, thank you for the evolution of Ukrainian reptiloids. I am sketching out the future details and marking the center lines right away, which will help me during the work. I am cutting the detail out with the angle grinder from Intertool. It's an excellent tool that I've been using for more than a year. This angle grinder has a speed switch, which makes it really comfortable to use. The thickness of the sheet is 1.5 mm. But how did they make medieval armor without modern instruments? We do it like this. And common people did it with a hammer and chisel. Lastly, I remove the burrs on the edges. Now I am going to make a flat workpiece a bit arched. To be honest, it can be done without heating, but it would be easier once the steel is warmed up. Although this way it increases the oxygen and propane usage. I make such sacrifices for the pretty visual content. The main mistake you can make when forging such detail is to start from the middle. If you start in the middle, it will be very thin and even crack before the work is finished. Once the depth of the detail becomes greater, there comes a point when I need to start using a hammer with such a long hammerhead. While hammering, the edges vibrate and can hit the handle of the hammer or the hands of the Homo sapiens. Be careful with your hands, you will need them to leave likes and comments under the video. During the work, there are flutes appearing that need to be smoothed out before they become too sharp. Sharp flutes have a great chance of cracking while smoothing, so pay attention to that. According to the legends of Skyrim, the magic of tomb is available only to the Dragonborn. But we've been using this magic in everyday life since the Kyrus times. Admit it, it is more practical than running around in mountains and screaming like a seagull, as some Dovakin does. But there is an issue. The usage of the true magic has led to a thunderstorm and the power is out. So I have to work without power for a bit. Now I'm using the resin method. Its main principle is that the cold part is touching the device, and we are hammering the hot part. Such a method allows us to lower the material, essentially without losing the thickness. Meanwhile, the reptiloids from the power company used their magic and our village has power now. I worked with raising starting from the center line. This is why a bulge for a future rib has been shaped here. A bit of correction and our workpiece has almost the needed shape. I'm trying it on. Yes, that's what I need. Now I need to trim it a bit because the pattern was a bit bigger than needed. And now I'm bending the edges. A couple more slabs and the shoulders are done. But I understand that a lot of my subscribers have not yet evolved to Yucca Reptilians. So, I'm showing how a regular human can do it. I'm using a device with a small flat space. I'm heating up the edge so that the cold metal starts on the bend line. Then I start hammering with a regular hammer. After I've done that on both shoulders, I can straighten the edges on the central rib. Here I can use the raising method as well, and it can only be done with hot steel. Besides the main details that are almost finished, both shoulders have two segments on the bottom. I'm cutting them out of the sheet of steel 1.2 mm thick. The sheet has a very smooth surface, which is not typical for handwork. So I'm forging all of the details, so that they look like they've been forged and not made on a rolling mill.
I'm drawing a line 4 mm from the edge of the detail. This will be rolling. Yes, it is not on the Skyrim design, but I think it is appropriate here, because the medieval shoulders often had such a rolling. Besides the bottom steel segments, I am going to make another segment on the top, but it will be done out of leather, so there should be 5 holes. You take the detail and drill, and I will do it as I did in the middle ages, without modern tools. The bottom segments need to move, so I make cutouts in them. I'm making holes one against the other, and they make out an almost finished cutout, the edges of which should be fixed a bit with a file. I am cutting out the leather segment, it has to be there so that the shoulders could be laced to the gambeson or a gorget. The elasticity of the leather will help with the movability, although this element is also absent in the design of the shoulders of the Dawnguard from Skyrim. The segments are done, and now I need to make some small details. There should be a rune of the magic of regeneration. I'd like to press it out with a stamp that can be easily made. I'm outlining the drawing with a chisel. I'm finishing it off with a dental drill, while the detail is clenched in the vise from Intertool. This vise can turn, and it is very important for such work. I've welded two pieces of the stamp, and I'm heating up the part without the drawing and pressing it. It has to be done around four times. The hot metal will be pressed into the deepening, and we'll get the second part of the stamp. I've made two rods for holding the stamps in the correct position, and now I'm pressing the symbol on the shoulder. Since the stamp is quite wide, I am additionally pressing the area near the edges. The stamp has flat surface, so after pressing, the shape of the shoulders needs to be adjusted. I have to do it in a way so that the impression is not damaged. But due to the image being small stiffness ribs, it's holding its shape even if I hammer it a bit. This solution dissolves the scale in 20 minutes. 1 liter of orthophosphoric acid and 7 liters of water. This scale is very hard to remove by polishing, it is clogging the grinding disc at once. Since the image is pressed in, it will remain yellow after the polishing, the background will become white and our rune will have a distinct outline. I'm not making ammo just for anyone, so I checked the biography of the future owner of the shoulders and found out that his ancestry has German and Polish roots. So I'm making two inscriptions in German and in Polish. Both texts have a reference to the characters that have done the same as the Dongard. Here's the translation from German. My life, my job, my curse is to vanquish evil. And in Polish, lesser evil, bigger evil, bloodsuckers are an absolute evil, and I'll destroy them. If you don't know who is this in reference to, you can find an answer in the comments. The leather of the armor is brown, so black won't look good here. The inside needs to be protected from rust. 
So, I am covering it with the colorless varnish with the matte finish. Here you can see the final stage of the work, the assembly of all the details. For that I use rivets with pre-made semicircular heads. The rivet is not unclenched completely in the hole to ensure movability. This is called an assembly on sliding rivets. This method was widely used in medieval European armor. I'm cutting out the straps for the buckles that are essential for the lower segments. There are no such straps on the Skyrim design, but without them the armor would just slide off the arm. The shoulders are not tempered, but they were done by work hardening. Such hardening makes the steel almost as hard as after tempering. The shoulders that are laced to the chainmail gorget have a great mobility and never get in the way. The only issue is that the guard might hit your jaw when you raise your arms. But once the helmet is on, it won't be a problem anymore. Also, you can get used to moves that the armor allows you to make and then it's also not a problem. I'd like to point out that the medieval warriors probably didn't make such moves, because then they would reveal their unprotected armpits. AFU, short for Awesome Fighting Ukrainians, are the main sponsors of this video. And also Intertool, which supports the workshop with new tools. And I don't know what I would do without the benefactors from Patreon. Your support means a lot. And let me remind you that during the war all the funds collected from Patreon I use for volunteering. Thank you for this possibility.